Now on this one, I'm going to be elaborating a little bit further on that second step that I mentioned in part one. So if you haven't watched those, I'd suggest watching those before, or watching at least the previous ones before you get to this one. But I mean, it's not a requirement. Nothing is really. <laughs> now in the second area, I discuss the idea of having to mitigate the damage that masking can sometimes inflict or the energy drain and how to more efficiently use that mask that well you need to use sometimes for that it's more about knowing when to use it and when not to use it which can sometimes be difficult when you're used to or conditioned to use it all the time now when you were a kid or younger just in general you couldn't really differentiate when it was a good time to use it or not especially as like a young teen or whatever. So you just figured out how to use it all the time in order to kind of mind your P's and Q's and make sure that you don't cause anything or any kind of conflict or any issues that would lead to more either attention on you or well, negative attention on you and other things. Well, positive attention can be negative to the schizoid oftentimes, but you know what I'm saying. Point is, you a lot of the coerzoids condition themselves to kind of be on mask mode all the time because they had a difficulty early on differentiating between a moment that it's a good time and a moment that it's not a great time uh for them because it wasn't about them it was about what would make things kind of go down as efficiently as smoothly as possible without taking into consideration um the ramifications of said masking at uh, varying degrees and uh, also for extended periods of time and the kind of long-term effect it has on your psyche, uh, as you can, you know, well tell if you're a covert zoid or have been for a significant period of time. So part of that is, um, it's as funny as it sounds to me, you have to break the conditioning. You gotta, you gotta break, you gotta break that kind of conditioning of, I have to mask all the time because I don't know when it is or isn't okay to not be masking, right? As you got older and as you've had more experience and you've seen a lot more of life, you kind of start learning when it is you can turn it on and off and what moments, but you don't necessarily implement that. Or maybe you don't really pay attention or haven't been paying attention as closely as you should have been over the last couple of years. Now, what I mean is that there's times where, yes, you have to mask. Hell, there's times where even people that are neurotypical have to mask, right? Um, but the schizoid feels like they have to mask all the time that's not necessarily the case there are times when you do such as like i don't know let's just say you're doing a job interview or you're at work and your boss is talking to you or you're in a company meeting or you're um dealing with customers students uh clients uh whatever what have you people that expect a certain level of decorum or ability to socialize even on a fundamental level yes you're probably going to have to mask during those times do i wish that was the case no but that is the case that's the reality of the situation that is the real politique of the situation there's no way around it there's no way to get past it that's just what it is now maybe that can change in the future with enough efforts and enough advocacy and support and everything else maybe we can you know change some stuff about how this sort of thing is perceived and understanding that human beings shouldn't be forced in specific corners just to satisfy people's social needs but in any case that's not what's happening so masking is sometimes a requirement especially if uh, you're trying to keep your job or keep things stable in your home and things of that nature but is it required all the fucking time it's not there are definitely instances in which you don't have to use it use it use it and it's uh it's the ability to differentiate between when it, you have to and when you don't kind of like a I sort of mentioned that in the first video but i'll give you like an example like example a you're having your lunch wherever it is a break from whatever job you do especially if it's on location you're not lucky enough to be doing remote work um just put on your headphones people walk in they say hi maybe you hear them but you have your headphones on and you're eating or reading or doing whatever it is you're doing but you can't hear them oh you're very uh focused on whatever your action is when in reality maybe you just don't want to be bothered don't be just don't respond now same situation but your boss walks in does that mm, 
maybe that's when you go, uh, gotta put on head, put down the headphones and react and do what I have to do. Cool. Now, what is a more likely scenario? That your boss is going to be the one doing this, or that just random coworkers and other people might be the ones doing this, or trying to have a conversation with you, or whatever. Usually the latter. So, if that's the case, most of the time, you can ignore them. You don't have to respond. And it isn't rude if they think you're just not hearing them, or not listening for whatever reason, or if you're busy, right? They won't take it as a personal slight. And they shouldn't be taking it as a personal slight, in my opinion, to begin with. If you were to say, oh, I don't feel like talking much, but hello, and that's it, hmm, that would be nice. But saying a statement like that would probably net you some negative brownie points uh, on, on them and then whoever they talk to about you later because of that reason, which is an unfortunate thing, but again, reality of the situation. So there's ways to kind of get around it. Uh, another more like at home example. You're at home, you're busy doing something. Maybe you're playing some games, maybe you're reading some, maybe you're listening to some music. Maybe you're just working on, I don't know, a project that you're interested in at that time. I don't know, whatever your hobby may be. Okay. Somebody in your family says, hey, I saw this interesting thing on TV. Or, hey, did you hear about this? Or, oh man, oh, what a day. Or any of that sort of stuff. Well, depending on your conditions and the possibility, you can also choose to not acknowledge that. Or don't react to a very um, interesting be like, oh, oh yeah, well, oh, that's that's something. Very short, but then you're like, oh, I'm so busy. And you just go back to whatever you're doing. Okay, that's a situation where you can do that. A situation where it probably wouldn't be a good idea to do that is if a family member is asking you to help them with something. Or a family member is in legitimate distress of some kind. Or really needs to speak to you about something that they view as important. Not just something simple or, or um, flippant. So in those situations, you would go, oh, masking time. So I better do it um, because one, it's respectful to them uh, to help, you know, acknowledge the situation that they're going through, even if you don't understand it in your own capacity, uh, because you would want them to do the same for you. And I know they probably won't be doing the same for you, but hey, it's a matter of principle and you got to try. But in any case, it also beneficial because then it helps you avoid some kind of the conflicts and some of the other issues that come with that with ignoring statements that require a certain level of recognition, at least on their part. Well, on your part for them, if that makes sense. Here's another situation. Oh, you're invited to a, well, not necessarily mandatory, but you're invited to a company meeting. You're invited to a gathering that has to do with um, family members that haven't been seen for a long time, grandmas, grandpas, uncles, aunts that haven't visited in a long time. And for some reason, there's people in your family that think it's very important that you will be around that person, even if you're not going to be, you don't know them, you don't really feel much for them or want to interact. Okay, that's an example of a family gathering that you should probably attend and you might have to mask up because mm, saying you don't want to go and then just not participating in it is going to probably bring you a load of problems you probably don't want to deal with and questions and assumptions and misunderstandings and everything else. Okay, fine. There's a situation where maybe it's a good idea to go and you might have to mask for the evening to so be ready for that. And even while you're there, there might be situations where you can just sit down and do nothing or pretend you're tired or sleepy and take a nap on the couch or be on your phone and say, uh, oh, you're working on something or, or say, oh, I need a minute and you step away from the party or whatever it is and just don't come back for an hour. So you got really caught up in a phone call. I don't know. When in reality, maybe you just sat out there and looked at the trees. That's fine too. But the point is, you probably have to go with situations like that. Funerals. Um, you know, stuff that can be considered important in uh, you know more normative sense. Now, you get invited to a small get-together, a potluck, uh, some other kind of family event that isn't associated to anything particularly important. Now you have a few options. You can either say, oh, I'm very busy, which is the other trick, stay productive. So if you have your nose to the, what do they call it, to the ground? No. Basically, you just stay productive in whatever it is you're doing, whether it's your career stuff, whether it's education, whether it's, um, I don't know, exercise, whatever, whatever it is that you have an interest in that you want to be productive with them. Or you can even choose things that seem useful to them, such as like doing chores, cleaning the house, things of that nature that 
are still far they're energy draining but nowhere near as energy draining as having to do a bunch of social interaction right okay so you can just say oh i really want to do these things or we there's so much stuff to do i'll take care of it it's okay i don't mind missing it uh, i uh, i i rather um de-stress by getting these things done around the house or i rather get this work done that i need to get done okay that's a really easy way to get out of doing things that you don't want to do like that right so then you do that you do that and nobody gets hurt and you're being productive and it's not something that you needed to go to. I know everyone's circumstances, situations vary. You might have parents or people in your life or bosses or coworkers that are more intrusive and more, um, uh, you know, complaining about any kind of uh, rejection that they perceive coming from you. That in itself, it's a different problem. And you might have to navigate it a little more cautiously. But in most instances, there's probably situations where you, can, where you can make these sort of decisions I'm talking about. And it's good to make them. Because if you strategically implement your masking, you don't have to use it as much, and so you're not as drained as often. And you don't have to take in the kind of psyche toll of having to put up this mask for extended periods of time all the time. You could save it from when it's necessary. And in the long run, it pays off. Now, I know the idea of having to stay productive, regardless of what it is, is kind of difficult considering the evolution, right? You don't feel like doing anything because nothing means anything to you. I mean, that's part of the issue, right? That's one of the negative symptoms uh, is associated with this sort of deal, is that everything feels kind of useless and you tend to be very pessimistic about well, almost any action that you could take uh, pertaining to your own life or anything for that matter. So, if there's anything that can motivate you, to do things, it's to not have to mask and to stay away from situations that are socially incompatible for you, right? I mean, I can't think of too many things that would motivate me more. <laughs> so that's one way to do it. Think of that as your motivation. I am being productive, even though it's energy draining and exhausting, and I don't feel like being, or I don't see the point, in order to avoid more discomfort slash suffering of this type and doing it efficiently and might get some stuff done that might be beneficial or I won't regret doing down the line. So yes, if you don't want to go somewhere and you go to college, say you're really busy studying and then study. If you don't want to be a liar, study, actually work at it, draw, write, whatever it is you do, do it. Now you're being productive. You're not lying. And you got out of doing that. I think that's pretty awesome. And I, and I want to say something about like people that might watch us and go, oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. You're giving people advice about like faking who they are, faking this, faking that. It's like, no, I'm not. I'm telling them what the reality of the situation is. And unfortunately, I don't care what any therapist or psychologist or anybody says. When you're masking and you're the way a schizoid often is, you kind of have to. You can't be this pessimistic, kind of sometimes nihilistic, sometimes uh, bored, disinterested self around everyone all the time. It's detrimental to your survival. So being yourself is good around the right people. It's not good around, well, the wrong people to be yourself. <laughs> And not necessarily because you're so terrible and awful or scary or any of that stuff, which, you know, maybe you are, but I don't know. I don't know you. But my point is, it's just easier for everyone involved. And which brings me to another very important point. When you're not masking, find a place where you can just be yourself, be your, like me. I'm a morose motherfucker. I'm, you know, pessimistic. I'm always tired. I don't really feel like doing certain things and i don't want to partake in them but sometimes of course i make those sacrifices for the people i care about that's just how it is you know and i expect them to do the same for me and honestly it doesn't feel like a sacrifice when it's people you care about so you're probably thinking i don't care about anyone how is that helpful <laughs> so how about we start by figuring out how to care about something or someone now the good way to do that is to join a community or go somewhere where there's people that you might be able to relate to a little better. And uh, I've talked about it many times, and I believe it to be very 
uh, not just reasons to have to do with the adaptations or the schizoid PD itself, but other aspects of cognition that I think are very much uh, in tune with what's happening. Now, you come to the server, the Zoid Void, and you might find people there you don't like. You might find people there you do like. The point is, you're going to find people there you understand. And if you find people there you understand, even if it's only a few of them, or even if you only understand them through listening, but you don't want to interact, that in itself is that which is the mana of giving people energy when they're not at work, when they're not doing other things. I bet you often wonder, why is it that people, they get out of work, right? They work an eight hour day or they do something really kind of intensive of some kind. And then they go home and what they want to do is talk and socialize or go out with friends and things like that. And you think, why the hell would they want to do that? That's exhausting. Why would I want to work all day and then go out and be more exhausted and have to do all this masking, and all these things associated to it? I'll tell you what's happening. They're not doing that. They're doing it more intuitively, right? They're finding enjoyment and pleasure and relaxation from those social events and that socialization. They're not feeling what you feel. Now, how do you get that feeling? How do you get what they're getting out of those situations? Simple, even though not often implemented because there isn't a lot of places we can do this. You need to be around people that have a similar set of understanding about your perception of reality, that know what you're talking about, that aren't interested in those same things for those very basic reasons of it doesn't provide me any reward or pleasure or comfort. Other things do. Even if those things are kind of hard to pinpoint sometimes, there are others. So what do you do? You find people that could understand what those other things are, and maybe they enjoy those things in other ways and in other facets and in other topics. But nonetheless, the same feeling, the same kind of general understanding of what it's like to experience these things can be related to. And then you can have working value systems and mood regulation and everything else associated with being social or what it feels to like to be social to the average person. And the kind of comfort and energy it gives those people to socialize. Why do you think people talk all the time about, oh, I can't wait till the week's over. I can't wait till the weekend, right? What are they going to do that weekend? They're going to be with friends. They're going to be with family. They're going to go out. They're going to go to the store. They're going to go to the movies. They're going to go to a party. Maybe not so much right now because of all this you know, stuff. But you know what I'm saying. They're going to do something social in some regard or another. And that's going to re-energize them. That's going to let them relax and enjoy themselves and get ready for the next Monday. And I'm not saying that's what everyone does and it's so easy and stuff because it's not. This world's fast and hectic and barely gives you time to breathe half the time. But for the schizoid, it's even a, it's an even tighter fucking, you know? So that's my point. You have to be able to find a way to connect to people because that is a way to re-energize. And the only way you can do that, in my opinion, is to be around people that kind of have to deal with the same problems in that sense and have a similar functioning kind of sort of cognition and interest and so on and so forth. Hence, the Zoid Void or even listening to my stupid ass or watching the streams and partaking in chat. I don't care if any of that re-energizes you in any way and makes you feel good. It'll let you get ready for the next part of the week. And isn't going to be so great sometimes, especially the parts we got to mask up. And that sucks. Because I understand that. In any case, kind of went off the rails for a bit there. What matters is look for the time and place in which you can avoid masking. And pay attention to when it is that it might be more beneficial. Where the energy expenditure of having a mask is long term better for you. Even if you wish you could avoid it entirely. And even if it feels unfair or unjust that you have to do it at all. It sucks, but that's just the situation. You have to face that reality. Even if it is a dismal one at times. But nonetheless, the difference is this. If you manage to manage your mask in an efficient capacity, and you do something where you can start finding some people or doing activities with people that you find re-energizing in any capacity, combine those things, you're going to feel a bit better 
about the com the upcoming days or weeks or whatever else or however long the fuck your life's gonna end up being <laughs> you can already hear the jokes about like i hope not very long but you know can i eat faster and then also keep waiting because my goal is even if it takes me 10 20 30 the rest of my life my goal is to find a way for people to understand that people like us exist and then maybe one day they'll start understanding that the reason that we don't want to do these things or participate in that stuff isn't because we hate them it isn't because we are looking down on them or because we're just angry bitter and misanthropes we just legitimately don't get much out of those activities and those things and that type of conversation and socialization. We just don't. There are other things that work for us, even though many of us don't even know what those things are. But I'm helping people discover that. So I guess that's good. And I'm still discovering it for myself. Can you imagine that? A world in which people would actually understand that you don't mean anything by it. That you're not trying to offend or hurt them. That you just want to be left alone sometimes. Because you don't quite understand what it is the world is trying to do. In any case, I hope that was useful. And I will be doing a third part where I talk a little bit more about creating a mask that is less attention grabbing depending on your situation or what your circumstances and your goals are and your efficiency i mean not efficiency functionality and how much of a toll it takes on you to mask to begin with but that's going to be part three uh and i'll talk more about that later so this is the part where i need to shill so please don't leave if you already help me or whatever i don't know point is i have a patreon please join it if you find these videos the server, the channel as a whole, the streams, or anything associated to my silly ass, useful. Please do contribute in that way. Uh, donate. I really appreciate it. If you do the $5 one, which is the Garden Hermit stat, uh, tier, that lets you, it gives you access to the sections in the server that are specific to hermits. Also, it lets you jump on my live streams with me when I do hermit hangouts, as well as uh, future streams um, that have yet to be fully announced well kind of happen but you know what i'm saying there's going to be more content more things that are going to be associated to it that's the hope and that's the effort i want to put in uh if that doesn't work for you you don't care for patreon don't know how to use it paypal's fine uh i'll take bitcoin or litecoin i don't care whatever works for you i'll take it <laughs> and if none of that works for you well and keep watching my stuff like my stuff and post my links for whatever things you do find useful elsewhere and if you think my shit sucks then it sucks and whatever bye so wait out